Well, hey, you guys, welcome to the Connection Point Worldview Podcast. We're back for the summer edition, so fasten your seatbelts, get ready. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, I am here with Pastor Trey Shigley. He is uh, one half of our uh, Worldview director uh, duo. Dr. Zach Breitenbach is uh, off a little bit. So you just had a baby a little while ago, your third, baby Willow. That's right. And now Dr. Zach has his first, little Paul. Yes. So So excited for for him. It's, It's awesome. He's joining the parenting club. Yes, that's fantastic. And he'll be uh, joining back with us here soon. But uh, this is a podcast that's designed to take you as a parent or guardian deeper into some places that your student has already gone and just clue you in on some things that your student's learning, maybe tee up some conversations that you might have uh, with them to follow up and uh, maybe learn some stuff yourself as well. Uh, So this summer... um, it's high school and middle school combined on the Sunday mornings, and so they're all yep. in there together. So whether you've got a high schooler or a middle schooler, uh, this would be helpful for you. Uh, you're going through um, actually Pastor John Dickerson's book, Jesus Loves Me, which mm-hmm. you can get everywhere. If you haven't read it yourself, it is literally one of my favorites um, on the gospel and the basis basics of Christianity, which I think is the point of this whole summer series. Is that correct? That's right. We're trying to cover the basics of Christianity and the Jesus Loves Me book is just such a good framework because it's using the framework of the song, Jesus Loves Me. You know, the the song I sing sing to my kids. No, (laughs) I thought about it, but I decided not to. But, you know, the song I sing to my kids every night and uh, just in that basic, simple song is the framework for kind of the core of what we believe as Christians. That's awesome. Okay, so how did you get started here on this first week, Trey? Yeah, so the first part of the song, and the first thing we want to start with is Jesus. Hmm. Um, who is Jesus? And uh, we, we talked about how, just like in a sport, take basketball, for example, uh, when you're first learning basketball, you learn how to dribble. Um, you learn, you try to learn how to dribble with both hands. My dad wouldn't let me use my right hand when I was learning how to dribble, so I was able to dribble with both hands growing up. And... Um, you, you know, you learn how to, to shoot and pass and get into triple threat. And then the hope is you grow past that. You, you learn things beyond that, but you never stop doing the basics. And so we're going back to the basics. And the first thing is Jesus. Who is Jesus? So that's the question we kind of discussed in this first week is who is Jesus? That's awesome. Well, he is the beginning, the middle, and the end that's of right. what it is to be a follower of his. And so that's a good starting place. Uh, you covered four things uh, that were kind of core to Jesus. And I uh, was wondering maybe if you could walk us through those those four. Yes, yes. So a quick overview of them. We talked about how Jesus is fully human. And then secondly, Jesus is fully God. And then the third thing we talked about is Jesus is the Messiah or the Christ, which which essentially means anointed one or king. So Jesus is king. And then Jesus is sinless. And then we kind of broke that down um, and so the first one, Jesus is fully human. Um, when you when you talk about uh, you got God the Father, God the Son, and then the Holy Spirit, they've existed eternally. But at a specific moment in time, uh, the Son entered into our world, put on a human uh, form, which we call the incarnation. If you think of like a carnivore is uh, kind of a meat eater, the incarnation uh, right. means yep. like putting on flesh. Yep. Um, and became human. And Hebrews talks about how since the children have flesh and blood, Jesus too shared in their humanity. He's made like them fully human in every way. And so he became uh, human. And just like you and I, he was hungry, thirsty. He had emotions. He cried. He got tired. He had to sleep. Um, He suffered. He uh, died. And so he was fully human in every way. Um, and we talked about how because Jesus is human, there's a lot of implications for us. But one we pointed out is we should ask for his help. In Hebrews, it says um, he is able to help those who are being tempted because he himself has gone through it all. We don't serve a God who's far off, who doesn't understand us. He actually gets it yeah. and he uh, wants to help. And so um, he's, he's the person, the one person who knows everything you're going through and has actually handled it in the perfect way possible. And so we should ask for his help. That's, that's really cool. So fully human was yep. the first. And then you moved on to Jesus fully God. Fully God. Okay. That's right. And uh, 
this is um, shown. Some, some people will say, well, Jesus was a good teacher. He's a good man, but he never actually claimed to be God. He never said, I am God. And if you look in scripture, you're right. The phrase, I am God, is never uttered by the mouth of Jesus. But he does so many things that very obviously show that he is claiming to be God. He uses God's name, I am, when talking about Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, I am. And then the Pharisees tried to kill him. Uh, so he's very obviously claiming to be God. He does things like forgiving sins, which only God can do. He does things saying uh, everyone will be judged based on their response to him. He's called the Alpha and Omega. And then all of his followers, they say he's God and treat him as God. So it's not just this good moral teacher that has something that we can learn from. No, he himself is claiming and his followers are claiming that he's God. And then he proved it through the resurrection. And so because Jesus is God, um, obviously a lot of implications there, uh, but we should worship him only. Hmm. There's a lot of things that um, we can give our hearts to and give our praise and worship to. But the only one deserving of that is God. And so Jesus is not just a good role model. A lot of people talk about Jesus in terms of um, he showed us a new way to live. Yes, he did. But even more than that, he's the person we not just imitate but worship. Hmm. And so that's another um, kind of aspect of who Jesus is. And a lot of people, they like the human side of Jesus, but uh, they want him to mesh with all the other human good teachers of this world. But he's he's on a totally different level there. Which is so interesting just because it's, it's that classic thing of how in Jesus's day, they didn't question his humanity at all. Right. Yeah. They wrestled with him being divine for yes. sure. Now, fast forward to me and you sitting here in 2024. We we to think of him as human almost feels blasphemous. Yes, but we don't really question his divine nature. Right, and uh, so it's like we have the exact opposite problem that they had back then, and yet yeah. that he's fully both are both super important to understanding Absolutely. Jesus. And you'll come across this that's just so fascinating to me. I don't understand how this has become a thing. Um, but you'll talk to people on the street or I'll have conversations with students and they aren't even sure Jesus was a historical figure. Correct. Yeah. And no historian would ever question that. Right. It, the evidence is so obviously yeah. like a, as sure as we can be about any one born uh, at, like after the past thousand years, like going back further, like we are so sure that Jesus is a historical person. Um, it, it's just really fascinating. Like people, even on some ends, are willing to say he's some sort of spiritual figure, but didn't even live. Mm -hmm. And that's just like, I don't know how, yeah. you, how you get to that, but uh, it's interesting. There's so many different uh, worldviews, other religions, cults that would either diminish the humanity or the divinity of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that becomes kind of the launch pad for their own thing or their own belief system, just yeah. which is kind of not the, the fully human or the fully God is where yeah. they would have contention point with. So then move on to the, the third descriptor that you, you taught the students. Yeah. So Jesus has this title. We often refer to him as Jesus Christ. You know, even the phrase like my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is kind of like a, that catchphrase. <laughs> And Christ isn't Jesus' last name. Right. Um, it's, it's a title in Greek, meaning anointed one. And the corresponding title in the Old Testament in Hebrew is Messiah. So he's the Messiah or the Christ, which means anointed one. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, you're good. And what that means is if you are the anointed one, you are kind of the chosen one. You are the one that is um, essentially king. And so in the Old Testament, Samuel anointed David with oil, and he's saying that you are the future king, um, and the authority is kind of being passed to him. And so when Jesus is the Christ, what we're saying is that he is the king. And um, the Jewish people were expecting uh, this Messiah figure, this almost warrior king. An example I use often is like Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Hmm. This person to kind of rise up and lead them in the charge and battle and free them from the oppression of the Romans. Hmm. And that's who they were expecting, kind of this warrior king. And Jesus came as a king, but in a completely different way than expected. When he's being kind of interrogated by Pilate right before he's crucified, um, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. 
If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Therefore, Pilate said to him, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. Um, and then he says, Anyone who's on the side of truth listens to my voice. He's essentially like, If you're seeking out the truth, you should follow me as your king. Um, and that's something that he was killed for, is Jesus being uh, king but in a completely different way. Instead of leading them in battle and in freedom against the Romans, his enthronement was actually crucifixion. They put a robe on him, and they put a crown on his head, and they put a sign above his head saying, Jesus, King of the Jews. And at that moment is when he became king in a completely unexpected way. Hmm. Because um, if he would have freed them from the Romans, that would have been great, but they would still die. Yeah. They would still struggle with sin. And so ultimately he's saying, I'm going to free you, but I'm going to free you from sin. I'm going to free you from death. Um, and that's the greatest enemy hmm. that we all face is death, the hmm. one we can't get around. But he defeated death. Hmm. And so uh, kind of the, the la- where we landed on that is because Jesus is king, we should obey his commands. Hmm. And so many of us claim to be Christian. And if you say you're a Christian, you have the word Christ in your name. Right. You're essentially saying Jesus is your king. And that was almost, if you could sum up the belief of the early followers of Jesus, it's that Jesus is king. And that's why they were persecuted, because Caesar is king. No, 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 Jesus is king. And yet, if you call yourself a Christian and you don't submit to his authority, you don't follow his commands, you shouldn't call yourself a Christian, because you are <laughs> acting like Jesus is your king. And so that's kind of the challenge in that um, that everyone has to deal with when dealing with Jesus. Mm. Okay, so Jesus is fully human. He is fully God. Jesus is king. And then your fourth and final uh, for the basics of Jesus, what was the fourth one? Jesus is sinless, which is insane to think about if you truly grasp that he was fully human. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because we almost correlate those two. Oh, for sure. If you say, oh, he's he's just human, that means he sins. Yep. He messes up, right? Yep. And so Jesus is fully human and yet never sinned. (laughs) It's just insane. Uh, But there's so many verses in the Bible that stress this over and over and over again. Um, And there's a lot of reasons that's important, but two of them are, um, how amazing is this person who had no sin? How good is he? How, Mm -hmm. How great, how loving, how perfect? Like that's the person we wanna worship. That's the person we wanna follow. Um, That's the person we can trust. And so uh, on one hand, that's just if if I'm going to choose to follow somebody, I'm going to do it with the the guy that never sinned. Mm. Um, And then secondly, it's so important that he was sinless so that he could be a sacrificial lamb. Right, right. Um, First Peter talks about how we were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors with the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish or defect. And in becoming human and then being perfect, he's able to be a substitute offering for us. He is actually able to take our place because when we sin, we uh, hurt our relationship with God. We're deserving of consequences of our sin because that's the just and right thing to do. But when Jesus is fully human and sinless, he's able to take all the sin of the world upon him. And in exchange, give us his holiness, his righteousness, um, this amazing exchange that happens on the cross. And so um, we kind of said at the end, because Jesus is sinless, we should accept his sacrifice. Hmm. Because there's no way to work hard enough to get a right relationship with God. There's no way for our good deeds to outweigh our bad. We need to accept the, the sacrifice and of Jesus and receive the righteousness that he wants to give us and just let him take care of our sin. Um, and so that's kind of the the last thing we landed on and one of, or four of the many things we could talk about. about right, Jesus. right. But those are great basics that he's fully human, fully God. He is king and he's sinless. If you get any of those off or wrong, then it really can get us into trouble. And so to have those as some yeah. basics uh, to build upon are absolutely key. I, I'm super thankful for that. Um, so as we wrap up this particular episode, uh, we like to uh, give an opportunity to 
um, kind of tee up a question that you might ask uh, your student about uh, that would have to do with this topic. So what, what do you think, Trey? What would be a good question that we could engage our, our students with on this? Yeah, great conversation starter would be to just ask your student, hey, if someone asked you, who's Jesus, how would you respond? Hmm. Um, and then just see what your student says mm-hmm. and then go from there. And because I think uh, obviously it's going to depend on the context, who's asking them and what's the situation and all these things. But that will start a good conversation about your student's understanding of Jesus, one. But then also, two, how do you talk about Jesus? Because mm. those are two different things. You, you have to have a right re- understanding of Jesus. Yep. But you also need to be able to know, well, how do you communicate that to others? And so right. just asking your student how would you answer the question, who is Jesus, would be a great conversation starter. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, um, you guys, if you have questions or uh, would like more information about Connection Point Christian Church, you can go to cp.news or connectionpoint.org. That's point with an E. And uh, there's a lot of great information and resources there. You can also reach out and get connected with us that way also. You can also go back and listen to Pastor Trey's phenomenal sermon that he gave on Memorial Day weekend that I haven't got to see you <laughs> since then. Uh, he did a fantastic job. So go pull that up and uh, give that a watch because you'll be blessed if you do. God bless. We're praying for you and your students uh, over the course of this summer. We'll be back uh, with more resources before you know it.